Hey, we're gonna do a beef pie, cold winter's day. It's, it's literally just like a beef stew in the slow cooker. Lots of veggies, lots of beef. Give it about kind of, I don't know, six or so hours. Let's not overdo it because it'll turn to gravy. We've learned that before. So just a couple of things here. I've just literally prep, prepped it all up. So I've got my veggies, got my onions, got about a kilo of beef. So I might get you just to pop around here. I've got this going. Uh, you just want to brown this off pretty quickly just to get some of that because otherwise you end up boiling the beef. Okay, that's why we're doing that little chunk of garlic. A bit more, can't have too much of that. And I'm going to put the onions in as well. So I'm going to put the onions in a second. I just literally want to take the, uh, just to get that light brown kind of searing the beef, pretty hot, a little bit of oil in there as well. And as I said, we're going to just throw all the veggies in here, let it go on high, slow cooker for about kind of six or so hours. And then in the fridge, I mean, I'm actually going to use it tomorrow night, okay? So then we'll make the actual uh, pie itself, put in the pie, beautiful pastry, little sesame seeds on top, and that'll be a nice warm dinner. You can still see, we'll make sure that's on high. A bit of garlic in there, you can probably smell that. Actually, let's just get that going a little bit more. It doesn't so, matter so much with the onion because it's literally all just going to uh, go together. What it, I like about the onion is it thickens it up, uh, and that's what you want with those chunky beef pies that we used to get at the footy. Uh, those big chunky, it's really thick. So, what we can do is obviously add some wax and beef stock in there. If it's not thick enough, it's too thin, we'll put some corn starches in order to thick it up. But the onions really thickens up that process already. So with tomato and some tomato paste, just a beautiful kind of pie. All right. So literally, it's just a case of adding in from now. And I'm going to put this over the slow cooker, so it's not going to stay on the pan here. Um, so just adding it all in and then getting a sense of how much liquid do we need to put in there. And I've also got some curry leaves I'm going to put in. Uh, just I had some leftover curry leaves, so one or the other for some recipes. So with the curry leaves, they're quite dry. I'll try and take the stem out because you don't want to be picking through that stem. It'll become like a toothpick. Uh, curry leaves in. Once you do all that, we've got a fair bit in there. One went over the back. Beautiful. Okay. We've got a little bit of coriander. Again, this is just your flavouring up here. And you can keep flavouring over the next few hours as well, where you want salt and pepper. I'm going to put a can of tomatoes, chopped up tomatoes in, making sure that doesn't splash. Love that. A bit of water to clean the can out, so to speak. Okay. Got that, got that. And a little bit of tomato paste to give it that kind of yummy, rich flavour. And let's just see how it goes. We're probably going to need to put a little bit more liquid in. Yeah, we will, because you want it to be enough liquid in there to really kind of boil those veggies down a little bit. Take the kind of the... Uh, yeah, we're going to need some... So we're going to do some beef stock. You could use little stock cubes, or this, this is uh, probably a bit easier. Beef stock. Now remember, with this, because you're boiling it so long, or it's on the, uh, the cooker so long, a lot of this will uh, evaporate, this liquid, and it'll get obviously soaked up in the, the onions and the veggies as well. So you can see that mixing through there. Now, I'm going to add in a can of... Uh, Can of this. Where's my knife to cut that off? Watch out, Bobby. Okay, so get a can of this, oh, sorry, a jar of this sauce. You don't have to, you could just have done a little bit more stock, but I like to give it that really thick, rich flavour of kind of that thick beef, chunky, and veggie pie. Beautiful for a Sunday cold evening. 
Right, so I'm going to take that off there, put it on the slow cooker, put it on high for about sort of six hours. We'll come back and check it. And uh, as I said, we'll put it in the fridge, leave it overnight because you get that beautiful flavour, and then we'll pie it up tomorrow. Okay, that's been, uh, you, what you'll notice is I gave an extra couple of hours, so that was yesterday's, and I've just taken a bit of the liquid out. Now there's a few ways you can do that. You can either put a bit of cornstarch in it. I put two tablespoons of cornstarch in it, cold water first, and then in there, just mix it through and go a little bit, little bit thicker. I mean, you could put uh, flour in it, or just to thicken it up, you know, kind of that consistency of pie, or breadcrumbs, or just do what I've done. A little bit of corn flour, let it kind of, drain a little bit of the liquid out and I'll use the rest of it in a stew tomorrow night. So with the, obviously for the, uh, the pastry, just with a tray or whatever you want to use, just line it with you know, either butter or a bit of an oil. Um, this will just stop it from sticking. Okay, and I've got a little thing here as well. I want to do an egg just on top to get that really nice brown. Uh, that mix. So just beat that egg up a little bit there. Now, I've obviously defrosted these. Uh, this pastry, oh hang on, there's a bluey there as well. Defrosted pastry. Um, obviously it's been too hard to do if they're frozen. Now what you want to do is kind of enough to uh, fold it through. So let's just go one side. You kind of got to play around with this a little bit just to play it. Of course the trick is getting it just to the edge a bit and making sure there's enough for two there. It doesn't matter if you double up on, actually what I might do is I might cut that in half. Because it doesn't matter, oops, hello. It doesn't matter if you double up uh, the pastry at the bottom. But you really want to make sure, I've got the oven going, 180, 180 degrees there. So see how I kind of make just a little bowl there. And that, and just pushing it down a little bit so None of your mixture, high mixture gets through the bottom. Okay, there's a little bit there we can kind of take off and just take to the edge because we're going to end up rolling this over anyway. Now, with the pie mixture, just literally as you would expect, just putting it in. Beautiful, look at that. Now, for those that remember how much I've made, there's enough to uh, do that stew for another night as well. So that can either freeze or have it whenever. Okay, now, a little bit of dribble over the edge here, that's okay. Now this last one, I just want to put on top. So this becomes the lid. Okay, now what I also like to do, this is before we base it with the egg, it's just a couple of holes in it, just to, a bit of aesthetic, but also just let the heat kind of go through. Don't need to overdo it. Now, this is usually the best part of the pie, people say, but just sort of rolling up. I think that kind of edge of the 4 and 20 pie footy, nice crunchy edge. The reason we're going to get it crunchy, just rolling it through, is now you could do an oil spray, an oil, or just a, a oil. I'm going to do it with a bit of that, uh, that egg there. Okay, so just basing it on top, you don't have to do the whole thing, as in the whole egg, because we'll just turn into egg on top, right? So, just basting it and the edges if you can, just lightly. Okay, I think that's probably it. Now, a couple of things I want to do. I've got some dried onion here just to put on top. I'm gonna give that a nice uh, bit of crunch as well. You don't have to do this. And also, just a couple of sesame seeds. Pardon me, some poppy seeds, not sesame seeds. So, 180 degrees in the oven, about sort of 30 or so minutes. Remember, that's already pre-cooked the, the filling, so that won't need too much. It's more just crisping that up and cooking the pastry. 